Back inside our Fortnite session, we can see we have our three cylinders, but we need them to actually look a little bit better than just a grid. So how do we do that? What we need to do is we need to create a material and then apply it to our stack mesh. And looking at our stack meshes, we have a material slot. We just, well, we need a material. In our meshes folder, let's go ahead and right click on the background and choose new material. Let's name this material underscore barrel. And we can double click to open it up. Now this is the basics of a material. We have some properties. It determines things like, is it meant for going on an item? Is it meant for post-process volume? On the right hand side, we have the output or the result of this node. Everything that goes into this determines what we can see. We can start off with the basics of just a color. I'm gonna hold down the three key on my keyboard and click with my mouse button. And this will create a constant with three inputs, red, green, and blue. We can drag from the white, which is our red, green, and blue, and put it into base color. And if we double click on this black square, we now have a color picker. We can pick a color, maybe something like this pink, hit okay. And now we can see the output of our constant three, or our color, is going into the input of the result, which is the output that we can actually see. We have quite a few properties available to us depending on the type of material we're using. In our defaults here, you can see we don't have opacity or opacity mask because they're grayed out, and it's because we have opaque. If we were to change this to translucent, we can now plug in opacity. I'm going to change this back to opaque for now. I'm now going to hold down the one key on my keyboard and left click, and we'll get a single value. And in case you're wondering, yes, you can use two and four to have a two and a four value. We'll plug this single value zero into metallic. And now this is saying this is not metallic at all. If we were to change this to one, now we're saying this item's completely metallic. And we can do the same thing with any of our other inputs. The documentation has more information on the exact properties. But what we care about is putting a texture or an image onto this material. I'm going to drag and select my nodes and delete them. I'm going to hold down the T key for texture and click. And I'll get a texture sample. I can drag from the RGB onto my base color. And now it's going to complain because I don't have anything inside of my texture sample. On the left hand side under the details panel, we're going to find a texture we want to use. In my case, I want to use some log textures to make this a log barrel. I'm going to look for log. And we can see we have three of them. We're going to choose the D. D stands for diffuse, or the base color, or the color that we're going to use for this item. If we were to now save this material and let it compile, go back into our level, we can drag this directly onto the instances in the world, or we can open up our stack mesh barrel. And inside our stack mesh barrel, this is where we can change the default material for the stack mesh. I can look for barrel and click on it. And now by default, any new barrels I bring out into my world will have that material on it. We can also see that the other two barrels that I did not drag a material onto, like this item, have been updated because the base item has been updated. Now these don't look very good. It's just a simple wood log texture. Let's go back into our material. And we can look at the other two textures we saw and why they're named differently. Now, if I wanted to, I could create two more texture nodes, or I could go back into my content browser, find those textures, and drag them and drop them in. I know they're in the Epic folder. We know they're called log, and we can find them here, the N and the ORM. I'm gonna select both of them, drag them into my material, and drop them, and now I have two texture sample nodes. These textures have special naming by the artist, so we know what they're used for. The one that ends in N, is our normal map. We'll plug it into our normal map. The one that ends in ORM is a combined or a masked texture. O for ambient inclusion, R for roughness, M for metallic. So we would plug our R into ambient inclusion, the G into roughness, and the B into metallic. And now we have something looking a little more log-like with more detail. We go back into our level and we look at our item and we can see we have this really cool looking wooden barrel. With our basic material set up, we do still have a little bit of an issue with our mesh here. And that's because our UVs, which is how our material determines where to put the textures on our mesh, are not exactly created correctly. We just use the defaults. The nice thing is I can go back into my modeling tools. I can look for the UV section. I can tell it to project UVs. 
I'm going to project them on a cylinder because, well, this is a cylinder, and hit accept. Going back into selection mode, we can now see I have my top not being as messed up as it was before. Now, I'm not an artist. This is just a quick and dirty attempt at getting something into the editor. Usually, you would then take and have a proper version made by another artist. The next thing is, while we have four barrels here, I want to make them slightly different. If I go into my meshes folder, we have one material and one barrel. If I wanted to, I could create four different barrel meshes and four different materials, and then we could have four different looking items. Or we can use what's known as material instances. If we open up our material barrel, we can go to the top. I'm going to hold down three to add a color. I'm going to drag off of my output and type in multiply. I'm going to multiply the value or the color here with the color coming out of our texture and then plug that into our base color. You can now see it immediately goes black. Now that's not my desired result. I just haven't changed my color. We'll change this to white. What we want to do now is click on our color, right click on it and convert it to a parameter. And we'll change this into tint. This is going to allow us to expose this item here, this parameter to a material instance. And then that will allow us to change it on a per instance basis. What that means is, let's save this out, go into our level, we'll right click on material barrel and we'll choose create material instance. And we'll name this one blue. We can now drag this material instance onto one of our items and we shouldn't see a difference. But if we click on it, we can now see we have that blue instance. Opening up the blue instance gives us a different look. This is our instance editor. It allows us to change those properties. We can check on tint and we can change our color to something more like a blue. We'll go ahead and save this, go back into our map. And now you can see we have a blue barrel. Each of these items inside of our world are instances or different versions of our original item that we brought out. So by using a material instance, we can change individual values. So now at this point, I could create two more material instances name them to different colors. For example, maybe a red and a green. Change them appropriately. And then drag those onto the individual barrels. And now we have one barrel, one stack mesh in our world that looks four different ways because we're using material instances to change them. One thing you might be asking is, how did I know the shortcuts for my nodes? We can click on palette in the right and this is where we have access to all of our different nodes we can use. And you'll notice there are numbers or letters on the right. Those are our shortcut keys. Or we can right click anywhere at our background and we can search. This is how I found multiply, for example. Now that we have a basic barrel in our world and we've got them looking a little bit better, we have a nice material on it and we're using some material instances for coloring. Let's give it a little more life. I want this to contain some fire and some smoke. So we're going to look at the Niagara VFX system to create those particle effects. 